we've just been given a very interesting statistic that the internet is how old now. Actually, can you can you summarize yeah. that before yeah. Toa? You before Toa. That before, I know Toa has a lot. Toa comes yeah. in. Yeah. Just summarize yeah. those stats for us. The, the internet came to Kenya in October 1995. Mm -hmm. That was satellite internet, the first ping. And up to 2009, we were on that very low internet uh, uh, connection. But come July, uh, June 2009, we got the first undersea cable, which was a broadband. And right now we have so many other cables. So we can actually say the internet today, or in, in October, uh, it, next month is going to be 24 years. So anybody born before October 1995 is an analog person. <laughs> anybody from October uh, d uh, October 1995 is a digital yeah. citizen. Give <laughs> <laughs> the analog right. gentleman next analog. to analog. Yeah. <laughs> the analog. The analog. 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 You need to withdraw those words and apologize vehemently. <laughs> but Waiga uh, uh, and uh, Trevor, it is uh, very true. Yeah. that parents are doing very little in terms of I, I'm not talking about if it's dropping what uh, uh, the content that goes into the internet and all that but uh, make it uh, also an attempt to at least uh, you know you cannot operate in the analog era for all that long yeah. but uh, having said that I want still, and I'm, I'm happy about my good uh, psychologist who is now making progress and accepting <laughs> that we need a very serious conversation to this. One, as parents, That's an insulting thing and, 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 and I want to uh, uh, applaud two CSS, yeah. whom I think in my own evaluation, they are doing something as far as value building uh, in our society is concerned. One is Professor George Magoha, and two, CS Matiangi. You may like, you may hate them, but these guys are coming out very strongly, God's blessing, and saying that as Kenyans, we need to do something. God gave us these children, uh, Wahiga and uh, Trevor. Until we do something, it's even biblical, and I, I, I know you are going to be a reverend very soon, or a, a bishop for that matter. It is biblical that any parent, any teacher, who is not doing his or her role, is going to be punished very, very severely when the day of reckoning comes. Uh, let me just take one situation. How do we wash our dirty linen as parents or as teachers, uh, for instance, when things are boiling out and I want to have a confrontation with my spouse and my babies or my children are seated there? Do I wash my dirty linen? Do I call my spouse and say, we need a strong conversation? Let's go somewhere. Let's lock ourselves in our bedroom and iron out this. We are doing this in the pub, in the glare of our children. We are unleashing all these uh, shenanigans, all this vulgarity, all this obscenity before the children. The politicians are not are doing the same. You are, you saw what happened in Kisumu uh, County uh, Assembly, where guys are going physical, bare knuckles and fighting. What are we telling our kids that it is okay to go confrontational? It is okay to go emotional. Let me, let I want me, to talk, yes. I, I want, you wear very interesting hats here, parent, teacher. Yes. Talk to us about scenarios where if your child is the bully, yeah. how do you handle that? <laughs> if you know your child is being bullied, for yes. example, how do you handle that? What are the signs, for example? Yeah, the, the, the signs will be so conspicuous. And, and uh, sometimes we, we, we actually forget to uh, uh, take note or cognizant of these uh, telltale signs. If uh, a boy or a girl is bullied, one, he's going to be so withdrawn, he's going to be so irrational, everything, anything small, even a fly passing by him, he, he just gets provoked all of a sudden. He's going to actually, that social uh, element that uh, Abigail talks ab about, uh, he, he, he's not going to be an outgoer to seek for solutions from others. Now, we do say that a problem shared is a problem solved. Most of our teenagers, and, 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 and I agree with the, the ICT guru, is that they are spending most of the time on the internet. That is where they are getting their uh, solutions, in quotes. But they allow things to boil and to build in between them. Again, the blame will come to us as caregivers. Are we having, as I said in the very first instances of this program, a very robust guiding and counseling department? If you go to school, uh, Trevor, yeah. the first thing I think you should visit is a guiding and counseling department and talk to the guiding and counseling master or mistress and see the programs that they do. We are giving a raw deal to our teenagers. Number two, as a curriculum, and I'm so happy that Kenya is having a narrative about the new curriculum. What percentage are we giving to the values? I teach English and literature. 
uh, let me tell, uh, 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 teach you some uh, very uh, 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 new revelation to this. Briefly, please. If a student wrote an imaginative uh, story, composition, which is in paper one, and in that story, he uses what the psychologist described, a lot of bloody scenes, a lot of uh, evil and creating of the villains, and walking scot-free without punishment, I will deduct four that. marks. I will deduct four marks. Because of what? There is no values. So as teachers, let us reinforce values. Okay. Let us always teach values. As preachers, let us preach values. As politicians, and the president has been uh, very passionate about this, yeah. let us start from all corners, all departments of the caregivers in this yeah. country and work with these kids. Okay. And finally, uh, and, and still the ball goes back to the parents. Let us kindly uh, try to be uh, friends. Mm. And, and that came out very, very well. Yeah. As teachers, and, and you did uh, uh, ask, is corporal punishment still the way to go? We will get I remember it. when I was in high school, yeah. there was a teacher we, called, uh, we used to call Jeshi. <laughs> Does that give uh, uh, positive uh, results? There is what we call in psychology re ne uh, negative re reinforcement. Yeah. The more you beat this child, the more uh, incorrigible the child becomes. Okay. So we must we might have a situation where we are looking at alternative corrective measures okay yeah unaona hata hapa town let me use the language of the town if somebody has written on the wall usikojo hapa that is where people will go mm. but what are the deterrent measures i saw somebody maybe out of uh, uh, creativity amesema kojoa uchapwe mm. are we are we having uh, corrective measures? What are the costs and consequences of even our rules? Okay. The kids know very well that if I do this, yeah. what is the consequence that I'm right. getting out of it? Okay. And most of our school rules and regulations yeah. are also devoid of that. Okay. They she, do not she, have the consequences. All right, all right. She has to respond to that. But let me bring in Abigail and tell me, how do you handle the boundaries between peer pressure and parental guidance? Because there's what your fellow teens are doing, and you want to be cool like them but there's also the right and what is wrong. How do you handle that? So personally, on, let me not just go there first. So I think the boundary... Please answer the okay. question. I forgot to say please. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. oh, yes, you're okay. Please, 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 don't please shout. Answer the question. Don't yeah. shout. <laughs> it's okay. So anyway, um, the line, the boundary is quite thin. And we are all humans. And most of the time, you will find like, hey, I, I, just, want, I just want to be normal. But if you remember who you are, this is quite spiritual because if, if you know who you are and if you know where you're going and if you know who has brought you this far, then you will have the boundary quite clear because you will listen to God and he's telling you this side and you will listen to the correct advice and you will be told the correct thing. So just keep yourself in a position where I am now ready to learn. Soon I will not be able to learn from everyone, but for now let me get everything that I need to equip myself for the future. Okay. Because if if now everyone is just running towards peer pressure, pressure is there and it's abundant and it, it doesn't ask who it's coming from, like mm -hmm. it comes for everyone. And you will just feel like I really, I really want to have a tattoo, I want to do something that everyone is doing. <laughs> but if you know it's all about awareness and all like your beliefs, having principles, because that is something I am seeing with everyone. Like, you will give someone something and she's not returning it on time. And I'm like, relax. Uh, we, we agreed on this that you're supposed to bring it this time. That's where it all starts. But people tend to figure, like, just to ignore small, tiny issues mm -hmm. that will add up to these great things that we are now discussing, something that will now affect everyone. One, so one of the challenges of peer pressure, and, and uh, I'm sure you know this by now, peer pressure doesn't end. Yeah. Mr. Mm -hmm. Alex here in front of you faces his own unique sets of peer pressure on, on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> one, one of the challenges of peer pressure is that in many instances, uh, the fear of being left alone. Yeah. Exactly in that everybody's going this direction and you're going this other direction. How do you uh, reconcile yourself with that, especially when you have to make a decision that will make you unpopular in the eyes of your peers? First of all, I surround myself with people who will support me. So if, if I am ready, if I feel the pressure that honestly I want to go this way, the people that I have secluded myself with will remind me that no, that's not the correct way, mm -hmm. it's this way. So if you surround, if you are in this group that is going this way, then you will follow the crowd and you won't get the crown. So the thing is, just surround wow. yourself with, you know, like people who will remind you those days, those few moments where you're like, you're not yourself, 
ama you just forgot who you are, then they will direct direct you back to where you're supposed to be. But if you surround yourself with the people who are just for the crowd, then there's nowhere you guys are going. You follow the crowd, you don't get the crowd. Wow. How important are your friends in helping you with the decisions that you make? She's talked about how she has a, se a set of friends who help her, especially when she needs to make tough decisions. What about you? Well, my friends... Actually, I've had a lot of friends through my years of school. <laughs> they only be like four. Okay. <laughs> okay, tell us Go more ahead. about that. Since them. kindergarten to now in mm -hmm. class six. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in my old school, there were a lot of friends who would leave me due to certain choices I made. I made. Mm -hmm. If I choose to... Let's say, for example, I don't want to go and play that certain game with them. They would usually just leave me, and at, by the end of the day, they, they would uh, seclude me from their friends, and I would, they would just leave me there alone, without telling me. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's better to have friends that you can get on the same page, and that will understand you. And what when your friends start leaving you? you, do you feel like you need to do what they are all doing so that you're part of them? The friends that make you feel like you have to be like them will, is the kind of friends that you have to get away from. Because those friends oh, wow. mm -hmm. are the ones who want you to change you. Even if that the change they have made is not you. Mm. Okay. They have okay. changed the person they became friends with to the person they want. Mm. Okay. One, one last thing, and you don't have to give us an example. Have you ever told a friend you're not doing the right thing? Have you ever gotten, they were telling you go this, so you tell them, no, that's not the right thing. I don't want to do that. Have you ever had to do that? If you can remember, if you don't, it's okay. In classwork, yes. In classwork, yes. Okay. Caleb, man, you, you are sitting in between quite, quite some wisdom. And even as I, as I continue to look at your program, yes. what sort of challenges, you've had a chance to speak about children protection, online safety, overseas yes you've heard what they are going through yes you know and so someone watching this program might think wow the situation in kenya sounds so scary what's going on in other <laughs> in other countries <laughs> yeah so f first of all when i attended that conference and i had people talking about online safety i was like uh, this is not happening in my village where, where was the conference first of all? it was in mexico in mexico uh, yeah, internet governance forum uh, my first you know view was like uh, this is a first world problem wait until i came <laughs> home <laughs> wait until i came home and I started being more intentional. And uh, there's a study that I came across. Uh, there's a very close relationship between screen time and violence, especially among kids and, and teens. There's a very strong correlation between screen time and uh, pornography right now. And that's something that uh, many parents, you know, they, they commit, you know, seen without knowing just live in their devices with their kids. They're not guided. And then their kids just end up being... Um, watching all manner, manner of things. So they are, they are in the West, yes, they are a little bit more exposed and they have, have a little bit of more problem, but we are closing that gap very fast with internet penetration of more than 70% right now in Kenya, with a mobile penetration of more than 100%. Uh, it's almost given that uh, nine in every 10 adults, they have, uh, they have uh, access to a device. So now the conversation right now should be now to really empower these people, empower the care, the caregivers. For me, the outlook of responsibility would begin with a the, with the parent, then closely followed up by the teacher, and now the child take, follows suit from, from, from there. Okay, and I'd like to hear from Shiro, because now we keep talking about the merits and the demerits of this conversation, but take a look at the story that we were talking about, the consolata mm -hmm. issue, and not even to get into the merits of all that. Mm -hmm. Can a child of that age handle the backlash that came with what he said? online because they also need some sort of a help because there's the issue of the child who's being bullied and then there's him who people sort of castigated him and he had to apologize actually let's, let's paint a broader picture yeah. children nowadays with access to the internet a child in the past would have ranted on their own yeah in their <laughs> village <laughs> yeah, but now when they rant it goes viral and it's not just that boy it's happened around the yeah. world as well mm. how do such children then deal with the implications that whatever is posted online will forever the internet Beyond never forgets. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, from a psychological I don't even think it's an issue of can that child survive? 
because even an adult would not have survived that backlash. Mm -hmm. Even an adult will not leave that backlash unscathed. Mm -hmm. And so, it, no, they will not. So what, 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 <laughs> what, how do we approach it? Do we um, have, does it need guiding and counseling? There's an article a friend of mine called Christine Mungai wrote yeah. recently called Twerking Your Resistance, Find yeah. It on the Elephant. And she argues for... She, she, okay, she she basically looks at the if Ikea was as his phase, yeah. or the, the the time the internet or Twitter. I don't know about the rest of the internet, but Twitter was awash with Random. conversations on if Ikea was as yeah. you know, teenagers on school holidays taking videos and photographs across Nairobi CBD on Sundays, um, posting things that yes. we shall not talk about. Yeah. Yes, you TV. know, and then okay. and then a music mm -hmm. group came up called Ethic, and. Someone tweeted recently and said, you told Ethic or you told the, 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 the 18, 19 year olds of Ifikia Wazazi that you will not hire them. Not only did they create a job for themselves in Ethic, they, pay, they earn more than you do. That clicked something in my mind. Mm -hmm. It told me that number one, a lot of the things we see online are in many ways a response. It may not be a response we want to hear. It may not even be the correct response, but it's a response and it's an impassioned response. And an impassioned response will get traction no matter which way you look at it. Mm -hmm. And so it, it may look like they're headed in quote unquote the right direction because the response has gained traction. And you know, in the case of people like Ethic and Sailors, they've been able to get their money's worth after being told how they will not be hired yeah. amongst other things but i think you should read the article but it it left me thinking in which ways are we creating a fear that leads the people who are younger than us to not want to hear anything we're saying when he was talking about discipline as being cre you know a consequence based approach i asked myself isn't that just making a person afraid of the consequences that's not making them moral it's just how, are, how are you disciplined and, and what so, did that do for you uh a lot like she 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 my, my parents were very conversational very actually i remember when we were growing up there were a lot of people around my parents lives who would say they're too lenient on us um, even in our hearing they'd, they'd really want to make it sound like we are not as disciplined or as no, we are too outspoken. Especially yeah. for me, it was that I'm too outspoken. Yeah. And so, but my parents were largely So they're saying it's outspoken, you need to be more, you need I, need, to be I need to be more subdued, I need to be quieter. Okay. So they were very, very, my father especially was very encouraging of yeah. just me being myself. Okay. And so I remember one time, um, we had an issue with the school administration and it was for something that I didn't do and my father knew very clearly that's not my child and to this day he you know we both know that's not something I would have done even I know that's not something I would have done my class teacher at the time was like that can't be her yeah. and but the school administration was adamant and my father very clearly told them Mr. Jafkuza mtoto wangu nyumbani Mm. And wow. that okay. stuck with me. So okay. my parents were very conversational supportive. in how they, very supportive and very yeah. conversational in how they parented us. Okay. Um, and for me, what that did, yeah. because you know, there's, there's the approach and then the effect. So the, the effect, <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. the effect of that was it taught me to think for myself at a very early age. Okay. And in thinking for yourself, you now make decisions not so much from a pressured point, yeah. but from a point of what am I trying to create as a person? Okay. That, that was the question they kept asking us. So, right. okay, you, fine, you want to create, you tell me you want to create a life that is heading in X and Y direction. You want to create a life that is heading you towards, let's say, university. Um, are you doing things today that are creating a life that is headed towards university? Towards I cannot okay. tell you which is the complete right way and you must follow it 100 yeah. percent. my rules are my rules and but you're the one who said you want to go to uni are your mm -hmm. grades right now creating opportunities for you to go to uni that, that okay. you know those are the conversations we were having right. in high school